Danny watches a lot of television and movies. John does not. Listen in as she tells him about what she's watching and he tries to make sense of it all. Welcome to Watching My Stories with Danny and John. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Watching My Stories. Again. I'm Danny. I'm John. I'm, here, here, here we are again somewhere. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this was we are the we are doing this a Saturday after Thanksgiving. We are recording this. Um so it's been a nice holiday week. John took the whole week off, so we've I been did. enjoying that. It's been great, but it's going really fast. As it is. As it usually does. It's almost over. Oh. Wah, wah. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> A little Debbie Downer there for everyone. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, it's going to be a little weird. So we've got some things to talk about, like normal movies or TV shows or whatever. And then we're going to get into Thanksgiving stuff, which I know it sounds weird because we're after Thanksgiving now. But I just want to touch base on just a handful of Thanksgiving movies that I love. And then I had talked about in the last couple of weeks that we had done kind of this exchange with the other podcast called Pop Culture Nickel. And I sent them my top five friends episodes in no specific order. And they ranked them on their episode that came out on Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And now John and I are going to rank these five episodes myself or ourselves and <laughs> and see how we compared. Um, but it'll be interesting. So we'll get to that at the end. So there is no actor's corner this week. It'll just be these friends Thanksgiving episodes that we kind of talk about in certain orders. Um, which is going to be tough. I have to, <sighs> so, cause they're, so there's hard. just, they're so good. Yeah. Okay. So before we get to all that, let's touch on this week. Uh, John got to see peppermint. I, I watched did. it for the second time. I did. Yeah. And uh, so I've already talked about that here on the podcast when I saw it in the theater. Um, but this was kind of a big deal for John because I think that week he openly admitted that he's not a super fan of Jennifer Garner. So what did you think of Peppermint and <laughs> Jennifer Garner? So, uh, OK, I'm going to take this in pieces. Uh, I'm... Jennifer Garner is growing on me. Um, you know, I, this went a long way. Um, we watched something else. Oh, we watched the first episode mm -hmm. of Alias. Yeah, which a few I weeks ago. I really hadn't seen. I knew of it when it was on, and you know, whatever. It was just another show I didn't. But watch. not enough to know that Bradley Cooper was in it. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I and you know, whatever. Yeah. But um, so we watched that, and I liked her in that. So this was kind of a uh, a natural extension of that, mm -hmm. I think. Um, she kicks ass, yes. man. She is good at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am now a, a much bigger fan of Jennifer Garner than I was. Um, probably to the point where I don't mind saying I don't mind her. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna go so far as to say I like her. Okay. Um, st I I don't know what it is. There's just there's still something about her that I don't know. I don't know. It just you know she's not my first choice. Huh. Um, but Peppermint was fantastic. Yeah. If you're interested in somebody wronged right. getting their own justice yeah. and, and you don't. <laughs> it's like revenge porn. It really is because, <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's not for everyone cause it's pretty graphic. Um, oh, I didn't think it was, but yeah, well, yeah. I know I'm desensitized to that. You, you are. Um, and I think most people are going to be okay, but. You know, she has no problem shooting somebody in the head at close range. Right. And remember when I talked about it before, and you probably didn't because it didn't register at the time, but the difference I felt in, and I didn't know if they did it because she's a female and there, there was a different mindset, but I mm -hmm. felt like with her, there was no hesitation, no hesitation. There was none of the, like normally with men doing these action movies, there's like a pose before they shoot. Or there's something before they shoot. And this, it was like, before you even knew it, she had shot and killed someone. Like, yeah. you know, there, she never hesitated. She knew what she wanted to do and she went for it and was just, there was none of the monologuing and yeah, all that that's... junk, you know. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I guess male-dominated uh, shoot -em up movies are are you know the the monologue is very common right where they mm -hmm. feel the need to 
ramble on about something or tell their their story or you know whatever and yeah. yeah there it was noticeable that there was none of that you know she's walking along oh here's a bag at pow right right no no thought just well this is you know and again i think that was they 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 state that for five years she had gone off and she had done all this training and i think that's part of that training you don't give them a chance to fight you back mm-hmm and I thought that was just a very smart way of going forward where, you know, you just, you don't, you don't hesitate. You know why you're there mm-hmm. and there's, you don't need to make it pretty. You don't need to, you know, let them know you're there before you shoot and kill them. Yeah. You just do it. Yep. You just do it. Yeah. I <laughs> loved that. Worst Nike commercial ever. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. How? <laughs> oh, well, you know, <laughs> um, I think Nike would be happy with this. I don't know. <laughs> um, one other observation about the movie. Um, I was incredibly disappointed, uh, spoiler alert, that John Gallagher is a oh, bad guy. I know. Because, you know, I, I John Gallagher and I go way back. I mean, he was, <laughs> yep. he and I were friends when he, he was, was on Broadway. He was just a kid. He yeah. was just a little thing. Um, you weren't saw, really friends, but we saw him on Broadway in, his, in Spring Awakening. I stood 20 feet away from him. I think that makes us friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we saw him in Spring Awakening on yeah. Broadway, and you know he was really something then. And then he got the the spot in the newsroom, and you know I just like everything he does. Yeah, um, but it was also kind of cool to see him be the be the bad guy, not so, be all good. So in his defense, even as a bad guy, he was kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he was the bad guy with a heart. Yeah, yeah. There, there's the title of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy with a heart. Um, uh, yeah. But I thought they did a really good job of making you think the other guy was going to be turn out to be the dirty right, cop. Right. Um, you know, and I didn't think of it till just now. I, well, I'm not going to go there. But it, I, it was really well done how they, they made you think that one guy was going to yeah. do it. And it turns out it was the other guy. Right. And I just, I really, <clears throat> I, you know, I, it's a great story. And it's one of those stories that we've seen a million times with men. Yeah. You know, your family's killed. Yeah. And you go and seek revenge. And... She just does a great job and I feel like almost does it smarter because she really does take down everyone and they leave it open for a possible second one. Oh, I really kind of hope they do. A I really one. hope they do, too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so we'll see. I, I, I'm glad you saw it and I'm glad you really liked it. <clears throat> yeah. And as it was going on, um, I kept thinking that, you know, you could easily see a Bruce Willis or somebody like that sure. in this role. And now, having seen the whole movie, mm-hmm. I can't see that anymore. <laughs> I can only see her in it. Right, so right. So that, that was really cool. Yeah, you can tell it was made for, from a, for a female's point of view. You can tell that it was done that way. I guess. Yeah. I guess. So, anyway, so that was Peppermint. Do you want to rate it? Oh, I'll give it a four out of five. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember what I gave it, but I it think was probably you gave somewhere him, around there. I think you gave it four and a half. Yeah. But. But, you know, my memory is crap. So right. <laughs> okay. So another movie that I watched that really is not going to take any time to talk about. Uh, it was called The Children Act. It was with Emma Thompson. Uh, Stanley Tucci's in it. Um, yeah, it's on pay-per-view. Uh, they sell it like it's almost a courtroom drama because they sell it like she's a judge in England and she's in the family court and that she has to determine whether or not a teenage kid who is a Jehovah's Witness uh, is if she's going to force him to get a blood transfusion or not. So that's kind of how they sell it. And it really wasn't about it was, but it wasn't like that kind of thing happens and is over within, I don't know, the first 30 or 40 minutes of the movie. And then it's this other weird stuff. And like her husband wants to have an affair and she it was just I, I don't know. I, I did not really dig it. It was like it was another example, like like Stanley Tucci is her husband. And in the very beginning, he's like, I, I'm going to have an affair. I'm just going to let you know that. And it's not going to ruin our marriage, but. You know, we haven't had sex in so, like, the typical thing of, like, oh, we haven't had sex in so long, so I have to go have an affair, but I still love you, so we'll stick together. And it's like, oh, and now here's this judge who works so hard, and she's this woman who can't keep her, you know, keep love in her marriage. You know, it was those sorts of characters I'm just getting so tired of. So let me get this straight. Mm-hmm. He announces to her mm-hmm. he's going to have an affair. Yeah. And he says it's not going to ruin their marriage. That's... Well, he said it didn't have to. Yeah. And she okay. was like, if you do this, though, she says, if you do this, then it's over. Um, You know, but it was just it's all that stereotypical, like, <clears throat> oh, she works too guy. hard. And then they talk about a few times how she never had kids because she was always so busy with work. And it's just like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, 
I don't know. And then the whole thing with the kid with the blood transfusion, it was all weird. And I didn't really, maybe I didn't get it. You know, I, I just, it, it, it was not anything I would ever recommend anyone to watch. Okay. It was, I can't believe I actually kept. Wa- I kept watching, thinking it was going to be something, and it well, never did. Well, it's Emma Thompson and Stanley yeah. Tucci, so you kind of give it yeah. every chance, right? That's right. Yeah, that's that's disappointing and weird because <clears throat> I I would have thought that most people nowadays have caught on to the fact that women can do yeah. have a family and still yeah. be a kick ass judge and well, not even just you have to have a family or this. You just don't have to be mean, like, and that's what I'm still. Those women who, if they work and they work hard and they're good at it, then they're socially awkward. They can't love people. They can't have friends. You know, it's just like, what the, why, why? I just don't get that. So right. anyway, okay. Done. Children Act, skip it. Um, Are you even going to? No. I, yeah. I mean, you know, everyone was really good in it. So I'd probably give it like two stars because of that. But Two stars? Two stars because of the family. Yeah, involved. but I don't even because someone might see that and go, "Oh, I'll watch it then." No. Two out of five. Yeah, if they watch it, it's their own fault. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the next movie I want to talk about is getting in, us into the holiday spirit is a Netflix movie that just came out called The Christmas Chronicles. Okay. Where Kurt Russell is playing Santa Claus. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So I just finished it last night, and it was really sweet. It was really sweet and different than what we're used to seeing. Wow. So Tell me more. It was, um, so it starts with um, Oliver Hudson is in it, which was really sweet to see Kurt Russell's kid. And, mm-hmm. you know, and then, so he has this family. He's got a son and a daughter. And then it turns out Oliver died of something in the last year. <clears throat> well, oh. Actually, he was a fireman. So he he was killed in at work basically o- oliver is the one from table 19 no that's why russell oh, okay yeah okay oliver hudson oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. from that sitcom from uh splitting up together yeah that's yes. not the one i was thinking of <laughs> the, the one with chris D'Elia and brett moff and and oh no he was not on there oh i know what I, <laughs> <laughs> I know what i'm thinking of i'm thinking of the one with the the the, the brunette from that show the previous sitcom she was on with. Oh, right. Was on with Oliver Hudson. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. That I was just... um with David Spade and uh oh gosh. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, somebody is getting ready to walk past with the dog, so there may be an uproar. Okay. Um so anyway, so this was Christmas Chronicles. The so the the following Christmas when their father isn't there, the um the boy and girl or like the boys started getting into trouble, like he's stealing cars and stuff, and the girl uh wants to capture <laughs> santa claus uh on her video camera Mm -hmm. so she talks the brother into setting up the camera Mm -hmm. so that uh they can catch him and uh so they do he Mm -hmm. gets there they catch him on tape they run outside and they see him kind of floating from chimney to chimney and up above them is the reindeer floating with the sleigh and all Mm -hmm. that stuff Mm -hmm. They climb into the sleigh and then Santa gets in and they take off and then they freak out Santa by announcing him that they're to him that they're there. The reindeer take off, his hat flies off and they kind of crash in the sleigh and that's kind of where we get going. So, um, so now these kids, so, so Santa tasked them with getting the, finding the reindeer, his toy sack was gone. So they got to go find that, you know, all this stuff. And so Kurt, (laughs) Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell is a different Santa Claus. First Mm -hmm. off, he's not fat. And he talks about that all the time about why in all these pictures he's fat. And, you know, I go to the gym every day and all that sort of stuff. (laughs) Right. Um, he doesn't say ho, ho, ho. He's like, that's just, he, he actually says it's fake news. Um, and uh and he's a normal human being you know what i mean like he's very kind of hip but not hip in that like really stupid way you know what i mean like kids won't be watching that going why is he trying to be hip or something like that like he's just a normal guy where he kind of makes fun for the of the kid for stealing cars and then they do steal a car and you know, and Santa's driving really fast and he's like, he tells the kid, if you ever meet Mrs. Claus, you know, just don't tell her about this. Like that sort of stuff. He's mm-hmm. not just as like this perfect thing that people, you know, have so, made him out to be. So a very down to earth Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. And they okay. even sing a whole number. It looks like with the entire E Street band. Um, 
<clears throat> and it's just um it's it you know you go on this little adventure with them where you know the kids are kind of like the girl cl- finds the uh the bag of toys and she climbs in it and she ends up at the north pole and then she meets all the elves and all this different stuff but when you get to the end of it like i was crying it's a typical sweet christmas ending to a movie um and you know you just and you you find out about santa and kind of what his whole motives were and of course they run out of time so then they've got to rush to deliver all the packages you know to all the kids and it's just it's a it's a new kind of twist on a story that we know about, but the way they explain, like one, how they explain how he delivers all the packages to everyone was really kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got this little device in his sleigh where he twists it and all of a sudden you can see all the different like world capitals. So he just, he literally jumps in a second to Paris and in a second, then he's in Mexico in a second, you know, so it was just it was kind of it was just kind of cool and they speak elvish so whenever he's talking to his reindeer or the elves they're talking elvish so there's actually subtitles which is also kind of cool. <laughs> okay. Um it was just interesting but it was also the story about this family and these kids and <clears throat> and um and losing their father and the boy kind of having, you know, a really hard time with that cuz he's like mm-hmm. 15 or 16 or something. Okay. So, you know, I really would recommend it to everyone that, you know, when you're sitting around this in the next few weeks and up to Christmas, I think it's easy for a family to watch. I really enjoyed it as an adult. It was really fun to watch Kurt Russell be like this. Mm -hmm. Um, And then at the end, you know, Mrs. Claus shows up and it's Goldie Hawn. I was just going to ask if she was Goldie Hawn. I mean, Mrs. Claus. Yeah. So that was also really sweet. So anyway, so it's sorry. Our dog is barking out the door. Yeah. Uh, but it's called The Christmas Chronicles. It's on Netflix right now. Definitely check it out. Won't surprise me if they do another one like in a year or something. You know, we'll see. But it was a good role for Kurt Russell. Okay, good. Yeah. And was anybody else in it? Any el- anybody in Elf that we would recognize? Or Oh, no. The elves are little CGI. Almost, They almost look like little animals. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. They're like furry little things with big ears and stuff. So, it was a, again, it was a different take on everything. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So that's it for movies at least right there but i also wanted to talk about last weekend we finally finished the newest season of the great british bake-off on netflix oh, yeah 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 so oh, it took us a full week to get through all 10 episodes um but man this was a great season oh, such a good show this was and we talked about it i think this was the best season as far as talent goes yeah because early on we were like any of these people could win any of these people, I'd be fine with them winning. Like, they right. really had the most amazing talent. Yeah, once they got down to, like, five or six bakers left, Yeah, you could easily see any of them winning. Right, it they, was they any of theirs to lose good. at that point. Yeah, and, and one of the, you know, two of the guys who were the most consistent went out, like, five and six. Yeah. And, you know, from then on, it was kind of like, wow, it's really anybody's <laughs> Right, right. Race. And then the three finalists were all very young. They were mm-hmm. all averaging i think around 29 or 30 Mm -hmm. and uh that's the youngest final i think we've ever had yeah um but they did amazing work i did not like the challenge of the final that like edible landscape thing i didn't like that because normally in the final the final showstopper is usually some sort of like cake creation and and you know something that turns out to be very you can make very pretty and elegant and these landscapes were just i did not like the challenge because i didn't think anyone really showcased anything special in that yeah and one of them specifically had a golden opportunity right and did not do her normal thing that's true yeah kim joy yeah you would have expected her with her decorating skills yeah to just you know nail it because right. this is a perfect thing and yeah. just very it just wasn't a good challenge it felt very much like a middle well, of the show challenge than a, f- a finale showstopper yeah i don't know that i had uh, i personally didn't have a problem with the challenge itself i was just really surprised that nobody really knocked it out of the park yeah you know I guess, yeah. one of them obviously did better than the other two and got rewarded for it but right but the other two were kind of like just very surprising that they just didn't do more than they did yeah yeah 
it was it was it it was such a tight race going into that that at that point that was all that was left. Oh, so yeah. if you didn't if you didn't get it you you weren't going to win. It That's was right. just that obvious. Yeah. So it was a great season. Uh I will miss it a lot until it comes back, but I think in 2 weeks the American version is starting here and I think we only get like 4 episodes or something. I, I and don't quote me on that. It could be something, but they kind of only do it for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least we'll get to look at Paul Hollywood a little more and <laughs> and see um, see what <laughs> these Americans can do. You know, we've complained about it before. We don't like the American you know, shows. The, They're all just so... The, the, the British Bake Off is just such a better competition it's, show. It's, it's because just of the better people. television. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the caliber of average baker, but it's the... It's the personality and the the um, underlying, I don't know what you call it. British people are just nicer than Americans. Yeah, exactly. No one goes in there expecting to win versus an American show. They all go in there bragging about we're, themselves. We're just, and, we're just and, pricks yeah. on our competition shows. Yeah. And they they totally prove that you do not have to be that way. Right. And to have... A to be you know really good at what you're doing, and B to have good television. Right, like I I follow most of these bakers on Instagram. Yeah, and even ones from seasons ago, they still get together and hang out. Yeah, and right. even this latest season, I, they were all just together the other day, and it was just like that doesn't happen on our shows, or at least at least I don't hear about it. But they don't even give you know they're like oh you're you're off this week and they walk out like there's no hugging there's no crying like yeah you know here on bake off i mean the hosts are crying when they have to cut someone yes you know that just means yeah. there's so much more heart to it than any of our shows could possibly have yeah it's and it's really nice it, it's extra rewarding to watch somebody win star baker for the week when they're convinced they're going home right i mean it's amazing how just really to a person none of them think they did well enough to win right you know yeah and it's it's a uh, it's on netflix most of their seasons are now on netflix so if you haven't watched this if you say i don't like watch you know i don't care about baking first off the baking they do is amazing and you will learn so much about international baking and international treats and different ways and processes and stuff that look i love baking i don't actually bake but i love to watch people bake john could care less about this but it's so intriguing the way they do it and it's proper baking it's not cupcakes and cakes exactly it is there are things that you've never heard of things that they've never heard of right um and the way they do it whereas again with ours it's always like oh make a holiday treat and someone goes and they do their own thing. We're on the Bake Off. They all have to make the same thing. Well, out of the same materials. Like they'll the have same a pastry. Same materials, they can, right. They can do their own flavors or whatever. But yeah. for the technical, they all make the same thing. <clears throat> That's very true. Yeah. So it's it's just a well-rounded, wonderful show. And honestly, it is my happy place. Like I, <laughs> as soon as it comes on, I, I smile, I relax. Yep. I'm so happy. So... If you have not watched it, definitely go back. Watch all the seasons. They're all all the people are wonderful on all of them. If you're a decent human being, you'll get a lot out of it. <laughs> exactly. If if you're a prick or asshole yourself, then you know watch the American stuff. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. That was well, very. That, yeah. That was very bah humbug. That wrap that up. <laughs> well. Get used to it, you guys. Oh no! Throughout the holiday season, Grinch will be here. I'm trying. To, <laughs> I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. He is. Not yet. Starting tomorrow. Christmas. <laughs> go. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of everything that we've watched late this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to touch on, even though we're a couple days after Thanksgiving, I forgot last week to talk about my favorite Thanksgiving movies. So there's just a handful. First, obviously, planes, trains, and automobiles. Everyone regards that as the best. It's the quintessential Thanksgiving oh, movie. It's just, I mean the 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 laughter is nonstop and then the tears are just yeah i can't watch the ending unless i'm in that <laughs> mood but i will i will change it before that whole thing happens just but so many there's good nothing lines. better than steve just martin and john so Candy. many good lines oh, from there's that. so many yeah yeah i mean yeah just the lines between them the pillow and the car and the deer and yeah. you know all of that's great but um the 
the when Steve Martin goes to rent the car and then and they drop him off and the car isn't there and he has to walk back and he's yeah. got the same woman and he gives that speech. It is one of the best moments ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when they're driving in the melted car and I just there's nothing. There, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. There's uh, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I've never seen anybody picked up by their schluts before. <laughs> 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 that's one of my favorites yeah uh, yeah so anyway. that's plane trains and automobiles <clears throat> uh my second favorite which is also very close it's hard to say uh home for the holidays mm -hmm. directed by jody foster yeah with holly hunter and robert downey jr yep. and um why am i blanking Ugh, mel gibbs what mel uh mel brooks's wife and bancroft yeah um and charles durning and uh, it's steve gutenberg's in it steve <laughs> Um, um and the the um, oh charlie chaplin's mcdermott oh dylan mcdermott yep uh and charlie chaplin's daughter daughter yeah geraldine chaplin that's yep. it yeah um i didn't discover this movie until pretty late i, I right. only saw it for the first time like two or three years ago right and just instantly it's just it's just so good it's so good it's so depressing it really is but so funny yeah at the same time and it's it's it is that it is that Thanksgiving dinner that everyone has. Everyone has a family. And it starts from the beginning when Holly Hunter has to just go home. And just the travel, being in the airport, yeah. then, you know, the mother showing up with her extra winter coat. You know, it's just, it's nonstop. The father out washing the cars afterwards. I mean... <laughs> Who, who who plays the father? What's Charles that Durning. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's it, so it's good. so good. There's yeah. nothing. I mean, I, I there's too much to go. And yeah, so many lines that I quote from that movie. Not, and most of them are all Robert Downey Jr. He's phenomenal in this. He cracks me up. One of his better comedic roles. I oh, think. love it, love yeah. it, love it. Um, so check that out. Home for the holidays. Uh, a smaller movie I love for that's Thanksgiving is called Pieces of April. It's with Katie Holmes and Patricia Clarkson. And um, Patri uh, Katie Holmes is uh, somewhat removed from her family. Like she obviously doesn't get along with her mother. And she's living in this little tiny apartment and with her boyfriend. And for the first time, she's having her family over for Thanksgiving. And she's just this... Um, you can tell troubled kind of kid. And so we follow her getting ready for the Thanksgiving thing and everything goes wrong, like her oven breaks and all that stuff. Um, but we also follow Patricia Clarkson and the siblings and the husband c coming to visit. And it turns out Patricia Clarkson has cancer. And, um, you know, I, it, it's it's another one that's like really hard. You know, it's one of those. It's not a feel good. There's not a lot of laughs. It's actually quite a crier by the end, um, but no way to bring the mood down. <laughs> it, it's it's a Thanksgiving movie, and it's really kind of a beautiful thing um, when you get through it. So I just I always like to bring that up um, <laughs> for Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then the last one that I usually associate with Thanksgiving is uh, Tower Heist. Oh, yeah. And the only reason is because it happens on Thanksgiving Day when they do the actual heist because they're above the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, ben Stiller and Alan Alda and uh, the f um, Casey Affleck. Gosh, Matthew, there's everyone. Matthew who's... Broderick. Matthew Broderick. The maid has gone rogue. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Gabourey Sidibe. She's she's in it. Um, it's it's a funny movie. I enjoy it, and it it's is. one of those little heist things. It's like a con oh Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Hello. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's a funny heist. It's all and it's a good heist because you honestly don't know how they pull it off at the end until they tell you how. So it's fun and it does take place on Thanksgiving, and that's one that I think a lot of who do they rip rip off? Alan Alda. That's right. He plays That's like a right. Bernie Madoff guy who um, th everyone that works at the apartment tower, the tower, uh, he they had invested their retirement funds with him. Right. And he ends up That's right. That's losing right. it all. So yep. the employees get really angry and yep. they decide to rip him off. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's a fun it's a fun movie. But that's also on Thanksgiving Day. So <laughs> those are my Thanksgiving movies. I know we're a little behind. I think you can also watch those during the next few weeks leading up to Christmas. Little sidebar. I, this may be a Christmas movie and not a Thanksgiving movie. But Probably. the one I just had this flash of Leah Schreiber. Um, Mixed nuts. 
Mixed nuts. That's is, Christmas. That's Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Don't we'll ruin t- it. We'll talk about mixed nuts for Christmas because that's my favorite Christmas movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. False start. Yeah. Nobody heard anything. <laughs> <laughs> for the four people listening, yeah. act surprised in three weeks. <laughs> right. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the Friends episodes. This is going to be hard. Okay. So like I said, I uh, Pop Culture Nickel reached out to me. Asked me for five episodes for them to rank because that's what they do. They rank top five X, Y, Z. Yeah. And this is this is more difficult than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so the I'll, so, yeah, we'll just go. So we're going to start at your number five and work our way up to number one. OK, uh, here we go. Uh, very unceremoniously. Let's just go. Uh, the one with the football. Yes, that is my number five as well. That's my number. And five. here's why. Here's the thing. It's a classic. It's from the third season. Mm-hmm. It's an absolute classic. The Geller Cup. There's yeah. let's look Geller Cup. There the lines that I quote from this one are uh, uh, cheater, cheater, overeater, or cheater, <laughs> cheater, compulsive eater. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, Harry back Mary and uh, you know Minnie Wave in celebration of me. You know Chandler and Joey fighting for the Dutch girl is very funny. Where the Dutch people come from. Yes. You know. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of funny stuff here. In this episode. But for me, for whatever reason, I love season six and higher more than I love the first five seasons. I think mainly just from overuse, because honestly, I mean, the show came out 23 years ago. So I've had 23 years of watching that first season over and over again or second season or whatever. Um, And I also liked that the characters were more developed in the second half Mm because we knew them so much more. Mm -hmm. But... I always love when we find out stuff about their background. So in this one, to find out that Ross and Monica had the Geller Cup, that they grew up playing this football stuff. It was so fun. And I love in the beginning when they're like, oh, we should go out and play football. And the two of them are just like, mom and dad say we aren't allowed to. You know, it's in Chandler's response of, oh, well, that's good because my mom and dad won't let me cross the street. <laughs> you know, it's there's a lot of funny stuff to this. Yeah. yeah. But... To me, it's not as funny as some of the other ones that we're well, working with. Look, if you're going to have a top five, somebody's got to come in fifth. Right. Right. And that's that's not bad because there are others out there that didn't make the top five. So it's still good. Right. And yeah. here's the thing. Out of the... So season two didn't have a Thanksgiving episode. So technically, out of the nine episodes that Friends had for Thanksgiving, coming up with these top five, to me, they are the closest... These are... You know, it could be just 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. Like, they're just so close for me. It's really hard to to, to rank them. So, so Friends doesn't mean as much to me as it, as it does to you. Right. Right. But it was... So, the, so four and five were relatively easy for me. Okay. Right. Exactly. The <clears throat> top three are so close. The top three are definitely 1A, 1B, and yeah. 1C because you could put them in any order and right. you, you, you're all right. And it depends on the day that I'm watching, yeah. you know, because it, it could be. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I'm just going to say pop culture for their number five. They had season eight, which is the one with the rumor. So, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I know. I huh. know. But that's OK. OK, that's, so what's so wait a minute. I just want to be clear. That's the Brad Pitt. episode. Yeah, that's the Brad Pitt episode. Huh? Yeah. Bring on the yams. <laughs> yams. OK, that was for my cousin Courtney. So also Courtney and Brian, who have been on this podcast before, my cousins, they also watched all nine. Well, they actually watched eight of the seasons with their daughters, introducing them to the hilarity. And they also sent me their uh, tops, top fours and that sort of thing. Um, and this football one was in everyone's top. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you're number four. Uh, the one with all the Thanksgivings. That's also my number four. So huh. that's from season five. <clears throat> mm-hmm. This is a flashback one, which again yep. is brilliant because we get to learn so much more about these characters. That was one of the great things about Friends was um, we didn't just move on every week. We really <laughs> lived in the past a lot. And so for this one... To see Chandler and Ross come home from college and their different outfits, you know, they had the flock of seagulls or then they were Miami Vice with the wicker, the wicker shoes. Yep. Um, And we see him get his toe chopped off and he calls Monica fat. And, you know, it's for me, it's a this one's a lot of fun, but I don't have the quotes that I normally would have from most of these. It is the first time Chandler 
tells Monica he loves her with the with the turkey on her head. Um, yeah, I think my the only quote I I really have from there is, "Well, who's in there? It's Joey." <laughs> 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 yeah, or Sir Sir limps a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I came up with that, and Joey's like, "You're a dork." Um, so that's our number four, number four pop culture nickel. They chose season six, the one where Ross got high, is their number four. So definitely, huh? Different so far. Interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, so you're number three. Oh man, I this know. is a tough one. Uh, I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, this is basically a coin flip. Um, the one where Ross got high. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's not mine. Mine is season nine, uh, the one with Rachel's other sister. So that's the one with. <laughs> so this is it's all very. These three are definitely very difficult. But this one with Christina Applegate, um, she's she wants the baby. You know, the Phoebe thing. Why is she, why is she making that funny sound? Phoebe. Yeah. Um, crazy plate lady. I love monica freak so again here's the here's the other thing that i i see as a difference is my favorite characters are monica and ross um i think a lot of people didn't like monica so if you didn't like monica and how obsessive she is you're probably annoyed by the plate stuff Mm. um i i love her and i love that stuff and i think it's hysterical when phoebe is cutting her yam in the air you know oh no you're a ton of fun you know and um i i think I think it's it's just one of it's a it's for me it's one of those classic episodes because Christina Christina Applegate is great um but it's a big one for Ross he's very funny with his interactions with her mm-hmm. and it's a big one for Monica so I like yeah. that yeah yeah I so the one where Ross got high is is to me really funny because the 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 one scene that typifies it you know all the stuff that goes on and then kind of almost right at the end where you know they they go around and they're blaming each other for mm-hmm. stuff and and uh, what's her face Taylor or uh, uh, you know their mom mm-hmm. um, <laughs> says that's that's a lot of information in thirty yes. seconds and yeah. she basically goes goes around and answers everybody yeah uh, that's just really funny stuff yeah yeah. Okay, uh, <clears throat> pop culture nickel. This is where they put the one with the football in their number three. Hmm. Okay, uh, you're number two. Again, uh, this is coin flip number two. Um, and I'm basically making it up right now. Um, the one with the rumor. Yeah, that's my number two as yeah, well. Yeah. This was this was such a th- thing when it happened because, of course, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston were married. So to get him on the show was a huge deal. But then for them to come up with the the thought of them hating each other or, you know, Brad Pitt hating her so much. It it was there were so many levels to that. Yeah. And that it was him and Ross. And now Ross, had you know, it impregnated her at the at the time. Yeah. But it's not just again, we get to learn more about their past. We learn about how they were in high school. We learn about Ross making out with the 50 year old librarian. We hear about the rumor that they spread about Rachel and she has a teeny weeny. <laughs> uh, you know, Phoebe's interaction with Brad Pitt is classic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and fantastic Chandler's interaction in the beginning when they're introduced and he says, I'm not going to come and meet you. I think it's better for my ego if we don't stand so close to, to right. each other. Right. Um, <clears throat> it's it's. <clears throat> Sorry. It's just, it's another classic episode. Again, all the episodes that are my favorites, Thanksgiving or not, are when they're all together. Mm-hmm. Um, when they have A story, B story, C story, you know, I still love the show, obviously, but my favorite episodes are when they're all in one room together. Yeah. And this is one of those uh, just classic. Oh, and this is where Joey has to eat the whole turkey. So yeah. he gets the meat sweats. Um, he puts on the maternity pants um there's it's all it's all good and all funny yep yeah 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 (laughs) okay so uh in pop culture nickel they had season five here the one with all the thanksgivings um okay so that leaves then number one for you you're choosing the christine applegate one rage's yeah other sister okay yeah it's just there like you said you know a few minutes ago it's just all that stuff with with Phoebe and um, you know her wanting the baby and then being able to just point out some you know funny glaring things right. problems with that right uh, it's just it's so you know I say this all the time on when we're doing this podcast but 
the writing for that episode was just so good and the deliveries were just perfect. Right. You know, it's just so well done all the way around. Yeah. So my number one is the one where Ross got high. It's, yeah. it's for me, this is the best classic friends episode. Now, my favorite episode of all is the one with um with I forget where it's what it's actually called, but the one where they do the game to switch apartments. Um and the reason for that is we learn so much oh, about yeah. the characters. Yeah. That's how I feel with this one. And Ross's performance in this where he's so scared of his parents finding out that he ever got high is some of the funniest stuff i mean he's at this point got to be 31 32 and he's he's afraid of his parents but in order to get them to lake chandler we've got to tell him the truth phoebe having her dreams about mr geller and having a crush on him now rachel making the trifle with the beef and onions and the jam and the lady fingers and the disgustingness. Was this the episode with um, the raccoons? Jo- Joey? No. Oh, okay. Which one was that? Um, Sorry. I didn't mean to derail you. Sorry. Keep going about this. That's the Christina Applegate one. Okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, Joey and Ross wanting to go to, to Janine's. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elle McPherson's. Yep. So they want to leave. And the parents being there. And look, there's a few great episodes where ross and and monica scream out stuff you know there's one where chandler gave away a story about ross crapping his pants after eating tacos and they all start yelling different secrets like monica couldn't tell time till she was 13 you know those Mm -hmm. sorts of things i love that because again we get to learn so much about people and that happens in this episode where finally monica tells them it was ross that got high and he goes well, you know, Monica, you know, the, the hurricane didn't break the porch swing. Monica did. And she's like, he hasn't worked at the museum for a year. And they're telling on each other as 30 year old adult adults to their parents, all this sort of stuff. And he's like, well, Monica and Chandler are living together. And and then, of course, the bombshell. Ross married Rachel and got divorced again. again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there's to me. This is the quintessential episode. And especially then at the end where they yell that. And then it's Phoebe. I love Jacques Cousteau. Jennifer or Rachel. You know, I wasn't supposed to put beef in the trifle. And Joey, Mm -hmm. I want to go. And the mom having to go back for each person and and calm them down. And then the fact that they love Chandler at the end. Stuck. Mm -hmm. They stuck. He stuck by Ross during the drug problem. During his drug problem. (laughs) It, it's it's those classic sort of friends things that are just perfection for me and now you're taking on monica too yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's just good it's just good yeah. and um and for me as as the as a super fan of the show loving the characters that's what i like is where you tell me more you give me more about them um and you know the whole thing of having to eat the trifle i mean you know they 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 tell every i love joey where he's like i've learned some things from acting class you can mm, yeah or rub your belly you know and then they all come up with the excuses as to going to eat it but then ross and joey having to eat it yeah and this was john just at thanksgiving dinner he's like he's like potatoes good (laughs) yes meat good (laughs) damn good yeah it's just for me it's it's the best it's the classic matt leblanc's delivery on those Uh, things i like it yeah exactly (laughs) yeah exactly oh yeah uh yeah so the the episodes that i didn't send over that to me aren't as great but they're all good so in season one which again it's a classic but it doesn't because there's a lot of time spent alone or not all together um is the one where underdog gets away they all end up having to have thanksgiving together you know this is monica's first thanksgiving she has to cook for everyone um and you know the main line from there is when she's made three different kinds of potatoes they lock themselves out of the apartment comes in potatoes are ruined potatoes are ruined potatoes are ruined yeah classic season two there was not one season four is the one with chandler in a box joey punishes chandler by putting him in the box there's not a lot else going on in this one except for monica 
hurts her eye and has to go um to the eye doctor and she has to wear a patch you know eh, it was you know yeah, I don't remember Not that the one. best. Season seven is the one where Chandler doesn't like dogs. Uh, the only thing I like out of this one is where they're playing that game where you have to name all 50 states. Mm. And Ross mm-hmm. uh, says he won't have dinner until he can do it. And so <laughs> that's the funny. That's the for me, the Joey. funny story throughout the whole episode. Joey's like, I got 56. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> New England um, is not a state, Joey. And then season 10 is the one where they're all late. So Monica's, again, talked into making Thanksgiving dinner. Um, but uh, oh, well, Ross and entered, Joey go to the hockey game. And they entered Emma in the baby beauty contest. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. They, that one's really funny. I really like that one a lot, too. And, and then at the end, I always cry because that's the one where she gets a phone call. Monica gets the call saying that they've got a baby. Yeah. There's a woman who picked them to, to adopt their baby. Um, so it's very sweet, but again, just not as funny as these five for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. so pop culture nickel for their number one, they also chose Rachel's other sister. Um, I think there's a lot in there because of Christina Applegate. She, she, she makes it good and there's a lot of interaction there. Um, you know, you kind of see how much Rachel's come from being that same type of person, mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. that helps. Um, yeah, so <laughs> What? I'm just thinking of lines from there, you know. Can I take this call upstairs? Oh, yeah. Sure. We don't we, live we there. We don't live there. Yeah. And then, yeah. I, you know. And then and then Rachel's like, can I talk to you? And Ross is like, yeah, you want to go upstairs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my cousins, uh, Courtney and Brian, um, they they kind of sent me their top four, which I love, and the, and with their daughters' top fours as well. And all all four of them chose the same four as their top four, just in different order. So I thought mm. that was really funny. Interesting. Um, so they all chose the Christina Applegate one, the Brad Pitt one, the Geller Cup, and the season one with the potatoes around, potatoes around. Um, but all in different order, mm-hmm. you know, for each of them, they all had their own reasons. Like Brian was, Brian was basing his off of them eating Thanksgiving dinner type thing. The others were kind of like, which one made me laugh the most. So, um, you know, so it was interesting that they, they kind of stuck with all that, but they did not watch my season six Ross got high. They didn't want the girls to see that content. And so I said to her, I think when you guys can watch that, this one will make its way above all of yours. At you know, least I think Courtney is also a big fan of friends. So I think, you know, I think she'll get where I'm coming from when, when she yeah, does watch it. it it's going to rise up the charts. Oh, it's such a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing about television though. It's very subjective. Yeah. Right. I mean, pop culture, Nickel had theirs. We had right. ours. Uh, Courtney and Brian's family had theirs and they're all, you know, different. And that's, that's the great thing about TV. It's different things of different people. Right. And it also does have to do with, uh, you know, nostalgia. So maybe, you know, maybe the first season was just always your favorite because it was this new show and mm-hmm. you stuck with it mm-hmm. and, and it was the best. Um, maybe again, because if one person is your favorite character out of these six, and that person's prominent on one of these, then that one's your favorite. Right. Um, right. You know, and maybe that is when I think about all of these, you know, even back to the Geller Cup, I mean, Ross and Monica are really, they're the focus there too. And, and mm-hmm. maybe since they're my favorite, that that's what takes over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it, it's just, it's just the best show. Uh, I mean, it's just the best show. Thanksgiving episodes or not, it's the best sitcom. Um, other shows that I also was thinking of this week that had great Thanksgiving episodes, Will and Grace did. They have an iconic episode. It was two episodes actually where they had to go and visit everyone's family and they had a kitchen timer and they were all taking just 30 minutes to spend at their family's events and then the bing would go off and they'd have to run out. Oh, one of the best episodes. Hmm. Yeah, um, I never saw it. What? I never saw oh, it. Oh, we're going to watch that then. Okay. Um, yeah, because my my cousins and I we used to do that when we would then go to, we'd be like ding ding anyone <laughs> ding, <laughs> <laughs> um, so they always had good ones. Uh, Mad about you, which uh, Showtime was airing their marathon of their episodes this on Thursday. They had fantastic Thanksgiving episodes, and again, one of theirs is my favorite. Where you know they're throwing the Thanksgiving oh and they, the, Murray ends up eating the turkey, and then they got to sneak these turkeys in. Yep. 
Oh, <laughs> my favorite line from that one is Ira. He's like, I have no idea what's going on, but I'm entertained. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just it's and their parents are there. So they're having to try and keep right. secret as to what's yeah. going on with the turkey. Ugh. Helen Hunt panics and throws it out the window. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it gets stolen from the hallway. Like all these things. They have to keep go- buying turkey after turkey to try and bring it in. Um, this is New York. You never leave a turkey in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so those for me, I love to watch. Uh, now, my other cousin brought up the WKRP in Cincinnati Thanksgiving episode. Yep. yep. And so I went to, and as soon as I brought it up, John knew it. Oh, yeah. I remember when I was first watching it. Yeah. So I went to YouTube to watch it. Um, and look, I remember liking WKRP when I was a kid, but I'll tell you the first, you know, 20 minutes of the episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> were just a normal episode. They weren't super funny. Uh, well, it wasn't super funny. You know, it was just a regular episode. And then uh, the point of it is that they're the owner of the station wants to do a promotion, and he gets a helicopter and he starts dropping turkeys out of the helicopter as Les Nessman is down on the spot reporting. And it's his delivery. It's his kind of that dry yeah. Les Nessman of you know, and he pulls out the oh the humanity. He yeah. pulls out the line. Oh, yeah. There's never been a tragedy. He says never been a tragedy <laughs> since uh, the Hindenburg that's been like this. And the turkeys are dropping onto cars and people are running for their lives. And um, and yeah. And then at the end, the the, st- the station owner says, I swear to God, I thought turkeys could fly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the last few minutes are definitely funny. I still, but I even saw a headline today that said that that episode is like the best Thanksgiving episode in history, but well, if for, for me, lo- it's not. Yeah. So here's the thing. If you're of a certain age, right. I remember it as a kid. I'm 50. I remember it as a kid. Um, it was, it was one of the, it was one of the iconic comedic Thanksgiving episodes. It just was. Huh. And, and <laughs> You know, it, it doesn't hold up as well over time, right? I mean, I was a huge fan of, right. of like, um, Miami Vice in the 80s. Right. And I go back and watch it now, and it's like, oh, right. this isn't great television. Right. Right? It's the same sort of thing. But, yeah. But if you're of a certain age, the nostalgia and, yeah. and, and fond thinking back, sure, it's going to be at the top of your list because it was such an impact then right right right? yeah i get it i get it i mean krp at the i believe at the time was the number one show this was during its first season as well so it was only like the the seventh or eighth episode of the very first season it came on like a house of fire i think krp was it was a big deal really towards the top when it first started yeah it was a big deal i remember i mean yeah yeah, it was a good show i i did like the show yeah um but i just didn't remember that episode and but there it is so you can check that out on on youtube it is called the turkey drop and uh yeah so that's thanksgiving oh yeah we will now be shifting obviously to the bigger holidays and I don't know if every week we'll be talking about Christmas stuff, but then again, if I'm watching things just like the Christmas Chronicles, then I probably will be bringing it up. Um, and I already am watching all of the specials. So, you know, my favorite time of year, my favorite movies, my favorite specials. I love Look, this. Stuff. Christmas has been creeping into everything for the last several weeks. Yeah. So there's no getting past it or around it. There's going to be Christmas influence and in everything from here on yeah, out. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Grinchy. <laughs> Grinchy. Grinchy. Oh. His heart's growing. Well, nope. Not yet. Well, probably, but not, you know, <laughs> not, not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone. So that's this week. Thank you for sticking around and thinking of Thanksgiving still. Hope you're still enjoying your leftovers. Yep. And uh, we will be back next week. Until then, uh, check out our website, watchingmystories.com, and follow us on all that stuff. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All the stuff the kids are doing. Yeah. Yeah. And reach out. If I missed a Thanksgiving movie that you love or something, reach out. Let me know. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. All right. Until next time, I'll be watching my stories. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye.